Speaking of, this is a perfect example of uh, working on a live, uh, a lot live code. Um, you can see that guy's having. He's able to levitate just outside of his chair. There's always, <laughs> there's always exciting. <laughs> there's always exciting. <laughs> well, now we've all noticed it because I decided to say something. Um, but yeah, that's that's the way it goes. And I also should say, like the build that you guys are are looking at. You know, we're we're working on this game every day, so this build isn't this afternoon's build. Um, you know, this build is is we're playing on it because we know that it's it's stable. Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to another episode of uh, Empire of Sin Boss Spotlight. I'm Maciej Kozłowski. I'm a community developer for Empire of Sin, and to, together with me are our dear friends from Romero Games. Can you introduce yourself? I'm John Romero. <laughs> Newcomer to gaming. Yeah, <laughs> brand new. <laughs> this is my first game. It's pretty cool. Uh, my name is Brenda Romero. I am the game director. I'm Katie Gardner. I'm the lead writer for Empire of Sin. So uh, today we will talk about uh, Elvira Duarte. So, and I know that uh, this character in the game is based on uh, John's grand grandmother. Uh, also, on top of this character, we'll also cover the um, RPG elements in the game and the missions. But uh, let's start with the with Elvira. So we have a short video to present her to you, All right? So who's, who's gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> you can you can talk about how she's written. Um, yeah, like because there's two Elviras. There's the one in the game, and then there's the real one. And there, uh, I guess, like for the one in the game, we kind of borrowed a lot from uh, you know the the real person or or you know the traits that we saw. Um, she seemed to have so so we wanted to try to you know use that to to make her character kind of this sort of larger than life kind of uh, uh, character. So yeah, that's that's about, about the one in the game. Elvira uh, is in, and I, and I should add, Elvira actually looks like John's grandmother, uh, S uh, Socorro Duarte. So um, Romero, obviously. Um, anyway, his, in, in his great grandmother, she was Yaki. Um, uh, Yaki, which is a, a native tribe um, from Sonora. And she ended up, she ran brothels. So she had a whole collection of brothels, and I, and and uh, and in bars that went along with that. And there's some other stuff that Katie can talk about probably when we start talking about her missions. But I just I've always that some of the larger than life characters in John's family, when we when we were looking for Empire of Sin, I just thought like how why can't we bring your great grandmother here? Like she actually fits the time period and everything. And then my first question to John, which hopefully you remember the answer was, how do you think your family would feel about it? Yeah, I think they would be uh, honored to, to see anybody like actually portrayed yeah. in a video game. I want to give my standard reminder that we're on hot code. Um, anything can and will go wrong. Basically her backstory is she has, um, Avira has two sons. Uh, one is an adopted son named uh, Raul and the other one is her actual son, Lorenzo. And they're sort of like polar opposites. It's like Raul is uh, the good son and he tries to do, you know, what's best for Mama Elvira and tries to, you know, do what's best for the gang. And then Lorenzo is, does his best, but he's not, <laughs> not great. And um, so it's kind of like L Lorenzo has this jealousy towards Raul because Elvira trusts him and, you know, puts a lot of responsibility on him and he kind of wants that attention from Mama Elvira. So, uh... Right now, we're talking to Delia, who is Raul's um, partner, and she's pregnant and works in uh, one of the brothels that Elvira owns. So um, they're just talking about, um, but she's basically just revealing this information to Elvira now. Thank you, Mama. We need your help to support our family. What do you think that we should do? Yeah, so There's this will launch. We will take it. He can run it, earning more for the three of you. But I know we are not yet as strong as we were in Mexico. Please, don't put everyone in danger for us. 
Yeah. Yeah. Nonsense. Yeah. As we expand, we must be careful of the attention we attract. But these are nobodies. They won't be missed. Yes, ma'am. Tell Raul to meet me there. So just to address a, a couple of questions that I see, um, and just a couple of questions in the chat. In addition to you, we're on hot code. Like there's obviously at this point in the game, you know, there's a heavy polish pass going on. So, you know, bear in mind that nothing you're looking at, we reserve the right to change everything right up until the last possible second. So mm -hmm. you're going to meet up with Raul and see if we can find the racket that we're going to take over for him. Okay. So just, John, you're... Um, I guess just a bit of autobi or bi bi well no autobiographical well you but talking about your grandma great grandmother she had in she was known for having you know she basically adopted loads of kids yeah she expanded her house to like multiple buildings because she she took in a lot of kids so it, if her workers um, it, had kids she would basically bring him in. That's kind of, uh, yeah, where the Raul Lorenzo kind of backstory, we, where we borrowed that from, yeah. basically. Um, eventually sold her, she expanded into bars and sold her uh, entire empire when she, believe it or not, won the lottery. After doing <laughs> that, she built a chapel to herself. Um, that's so that's right. the, yeah, that's the full story. I'll never live as exciting a life as these people. <laughs> now we just have to get into the racket, so we're going to talk to this guard and... We can have, there's a little decision here about how we want to handle this guard. So we can either just uh, beat him up <laughs> and uh, take him out, or we can try a more diplomatic approach and try to, you know, just get, like, spare him, I guess, and get him out of here. So I guess it's kind of whatever, whichever way we want to we wanna do it. Well, usually uh, we are fighting, so maybe let's go for a diplomatic approach here and see how it okay. goes. Okay, yeah. So we're going we're gonna to just try to reason with him and see see if we can it's it's usually uh you have to um pass a check to to get them to leave they won't just leave if you talk to them um so let's see you seem like a decent fellow brought you to this line of work yeah <laughs> cracking walnuts <laughs> cracking walnuts uh what's the money for oh he's a bad man yeah <laughs> uh it's just money since you experience talking you're worth more <laughs> oh, he's starting to he's starting to turn. He's <laughs> uh, got standing around to do. Um, so, so here's our persuasion check. Uh, so the gang you're part of, they're not a long-term investment, but join Los Luceros and we'll take care of you. So, Lucheros. Lucheros, sorry. <laughs> Lucheros. <laughs> and success. Yeah. So you can still beat him up if you want to. But... Oh wow, nice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, gonna... thanks for being on my side, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, if you rather fight, as you can. So, yeah, that's his name, Bruce Willard, and Los Lucheros Bruce. There we go. And then because we, yeah, because we, we got him on on our side, and if we just got the security upgraded, um, because we just added security guards to it. So it's like, nice. you can have these kind of knock-on effects if you choose a diplomatic route. That being said, you still do have to fight the bosses in the game. You can't, like... Talk your way out of <laughs> yeah. Talk your you way. Yeah. Just give up all your stuff. Come on. One of her special abilities that she has is this devil's breath. So the in some of the questions that I remember, somebody says like, you know, like, but this is like this magicy thing. Well, it turns out that actually it's not. Right. So there was um, there was actually an oh gosh psychotropic. It's just, yeah, drugs, it's just it's basically. slipping my mind what the actual name of it is. But this was a drug used at that point in time that people would base effectively use on their enemies yeah. um, uh, and that it would have this sort of mind control effect on them. So uh, eventually I'm gonna remember the real name of it, but yeah, this is, we did, uh, uh, so we justified our ridiculous internet crawling um, uh, by including all kinds of stuff like this, but yeah, this is actually based in history. So yeah, now that I've said that much, let's use it. <laughs> she wants to take, take, over, yeah. take over the enemy. So I, now, space. yeah. Uh, so now, yeah, he he fights for us, which is great. Uh, yep. And then, so it's now he can manage it, or we say it's mine. Yeah. Let's let's just be mean to him. It's exactly what you said in the in the uh, the uh, intro, basically telling her that you're gonna take a racket. 
<laughs> exactly, yeah, so it's just like giving him some responsibility because, you know, she wants to kind of reward him. Speaking of, this is a perfect example of uh, working on a live uh, a lot live code. Um, you can see that guy's having, he's able to levitate just outside of his chair. There's always, <laughs> there's always exciting. <laughs> there's always <I> exciting. <laughs> well, now we've all noticed it because I decided to say something. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. And I also should say like the build that you guys are, are looking at, you know, we're, we're working on this game every day. So this build isn't this afternoon's build. Um, you know, this build is, is we're playing on it because we know that it's it's stable. Lorenzo, the, her um, of your actual son is here and he's a little jealous. Maybe that she gave the, the racket to Raul. So mm -hmm. yeah, I came to see what I can't have for myself. Um, and then yeah, drinker, womanizer and a gambler. You kind of have a place in this business, but it's not in charge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> real son. <laughs> yeah, we're a real son. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be mean to the, to Lorenzo. Plenty of chances and you squandered them. Too much like your father. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> yeah. Made mistakes, proved to you that I'm worth your respect. <laughs> it's a fine imagination. Yep. So yep. we, we saw that uh, if we want for, want to go for a diplomatic approach, we actually need to make some checks. Uh, mm -hmm. like hidden dice roll or something like this. So this is uh, related to the stats of the characters, right? Can we it maybe is. show how yeah. does it look like? Show the where the stats are? Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, we're just opening up the, the character sheet there. And you can see all of the stats are here. So for persuasion is the check that we used. And she has 66 persuasion. So um, the checks are kind of based off of it's a hidden number that you have to pass. And if you pass, then you get to succeed. And if you fail, obviously, you get the failure message. Um, and and yeah, I guess going back to, you know, the, like you can do diplomatic checks and you, you, you'll get a certain end. But I mean, doing combat isn't, you don't get penalized for doing combat, you know, in, in these checks either. It's just kind of a, a choice, a personal choice. And if you um, want to go down a diplomatic path it's sort of like giving you that that option and you might get something a little extra but um, y you don't know until you try it I guess <laughs> so it's you, kind of um, have you picked your uh, speaking of role playing stuff have you picked your trait yet for her to learn oh that's a good point yeah yeah, yeah the focus so, yeah so yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot of different talents that uh, characters can learn there you see some of our fine, um, fine art. Not, not finished. That's art. excellent. I'll take, I'll take credit for that art, for that X there. Um, that is my finest work. Uh, so, um, so there is, uh, so characters have um, uh, talents that they learn over time uh, as they progress, and then I'm wondering, uh, and this is a boss screen. You can also see characters have traits. Um, but I'm wondering if you want to, before we get, before we run into a combat that we weren't expecting, we might want to just um, add some people in there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think Lifeline or Survivor, the two I usually go for, just because it's really handy to not die when, you, <laughs> when you're supposed to. Um, <laughs> can, we, can we make that as a marketing <laughs> quote? It's really handy not to die. Like, that's a back of the box quote right there. Yeah. <laughs> So there is a question a from the chat. Uh, Knight is asking if we yes. are able to get skill points to enhance those stats. Yeah, so um, actually every time you pass a skill check, you do get a little plus one to that skill. But yeah. also, um, you know, mission rewards and uh, event rewards will give you uh, plus, um, you know, pluses to certain stats. And also, I believe there are certain items that will enhance your stats. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there's a variety of ways you can kind of manipulate the stats and make them um, make them better. Yeah, I've got a soft spot for for Jivy. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> He's just great. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go for him. Uh, oh, okay. So we can add some um, some talents for him too. Um, I like <clears> the <throat> bomb because the bomb you get. It's just like an extra grenade kind of option yeah. that you get in your action bar, which is handy. Somebody asked a question, uh, will brothels have male prostitutes? I am an equal opportunity person. This game features diversity. It features diversity everywhere. The answer okay. to that question is yes. And they're in there right now. 
<laughs> Not that I don't know if we're going to go in. <laughs> yeah. Like and I would say, like, there's there. even, you know, there's even um, uh, gender non-binary characters in this this game as well. When I was playing games as a kid, I, I actually couldn't play as a female character. Um, just because that's just, you know, it was nobody's fault. That's just the way it was at the time. Um, and and so I want to make sure that, that I had that option here. And even to play, like, I'm not 70 yet. I'm nowhere near 70 yet. But I love the <laughs> idea that someday when I am 70, I'll be able to play as a badass 70-year-old. Someone's basically warning us. It's it's a, the start of a mission. They're warning us that the BOI, which is the Bureau of um, Investigation, are going to start knocking down bra uh, rackets and basically... This person saying that they'll protect ours if we take someone out for him. So, Eddie Calhoun him. needs to go. Eddie Calhoun, he needs to. Yeah, we got to take care of him. So we've got a bunch of different missions going on here now. Um, promote an advisor. Uh, get ten rackets. Um, this is the Eddie Calhoun one. So we could go find Eddie. Let's mm -hmm. see. Yeah. Decide decide what to do with him. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Have you decided yet? <laughs> <laughs> Look at there he is. <laughs> yes, yeah, so something oh, there this, is, yeah. you can see in this neighborhood, like you know, obviously the building is changing color. Um, you know, that uh, shows the ownership of the buildings. This is a small ward. Um, uh, Chicago, they would have called them wards. We call them neighborhoods in the game because who knows? Who knows how many people would have known that? Oh, and also you can see here. There's a crew out. Oh, oh those are cops. Oh, those sorry. are cops. Oh no, there's a crew out investigating. So the binoculars that you see there, um, they're out uh, just checking out the neighborhood. Get lost. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> uh, that was Sandman P. Jackson mad that we <laughs> crack it. Um, <laughs> I will take the other one. <laughs> yeah. uh, so okay. The person who asked about combat earlier, you know, about are there consequences? Well, <laughs> yes, you know. Sorry, the three of them sitting on a bench was funny. I know, that was funny. I love how he just made them move over a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> like, scoot over. That's oh, even better. Right. No, that's called code. That's okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> just want to remind everybody. Shadow play. Yeah, I want to remind everybody. Yeah, this We're is gonna... the special DLC uh, uh, graphics option. I, um, I think this is just noir filter and everyone will love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're playing... Oh. Oh, that was oh. easy quest. Okay. What? Well, that, <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> Just as a reminder, we got for the for the fourth time, we are playing on live code. Yeah. So, do you um, own this place now? Uh, I think it was mine already. But you're not really forced to to do any of these quests, right? All of them are fully optional. Correct. Yeah. So they're they're sort of um, while you're trying to, you know conquer other bosses and take control of neighborhoods. It's sort of, it's helpful, the, the missions, because they give you, you know, certain rewards if you complete them. And some of them might involve taking over rackets anyway. So then it's kind of adding to your racket Empire. collection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so so it is useful to do them, but you know, you don't have to do them for sure. You know what? We we have actually a, a save file with a, that is was made a bit later in the storyline for Elvira, so maybe okay. we can just load mm -hmm. it and and see sure. how it goes there. So basically, you know, we had you know helped out helped out <laughs> oh, Raúl, well. talked to Lorenzo. Lorenzo was real mad and ran off. He didn't say where he was going, but apparently he tried to take his own racket and yep. didn't, didn't go well. <laughs> so uh, he's trying to take out a racket that belongs to an important family. Um, <laughs> so <Crazy. laughs> he obviously didn't think it through. So let's. Let's go find him and what he's gotten himself into. Mama uh, Sarah, what a great, it's such a great mission name. Uh, yeah, so apparently um, Lorenzo was here, he took out the guard, so there he is out there, and uh, he's inside. He's, he's inside, so Raul just ran in, we're gonna go see what kind of trouble he's in. Um, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> three, okay, we can take three, that's fine. <laughs> Easy. Uh, yeah. So uh, there is absolutely an Overwatch component to combat. Yes, there is. Yeah, yeah I'm just yeah. checking the questions Someone's got there. A question. I actually I use Overwatch a lot. It's just amazing. Yeah. I do too. Yeah, definitely. It's it's really handy if you don't have a clear shot and then you just you set it up and it's, yeah. It's nice when you have three people with Overwatch at the same place and then someone walks into it and it's just like. <laughs> Hail of gunfire. Yeah. Incredibly good. Some Super boss, dead. I think, even has an auto overwatch after their boss ability is used. 
so they automatically will shoot somebody like right after they do their ability. Uh, oh yeah, so Dutch Schultz is... Um, sometimes you'll find in missions that some characters kind of overlap in different missions because it's we wanted to create this kind of universe where, you know, you see the same kind of people in different missions because they're all in Chicago. So like Dutch Schultz is in a few different missions playing, you know, different roles in each mission. Same with like Frankie Yale. Mm -hmm. um, you'll come across some similar names um, as if you play as different bosses in their missions. Um, <laughs> Basically, when, when you have these conversations and these and this choices, uh, when you talk to people, does this affect how the, the mission or the whole campaign, the storyline for the character will develop? Can you have definitely. Like, branching choices afterwards, depending on how you deal dealt with situations? Yep, yep. So, yeah, so I, I don't want to give too much away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I guess this is... <laughs> Uh, so if yes you're definitive answer. <laughs> yes, there's some cool stuff yeah. in there. <laughs> so there's yeah, so how you treat people can come back to you and good or bad ways. I think that uh, actually we need to to wrap up because we are running out of time. Uh but I think that was pretty interesting because we haven't had much much uh, opportunity before to talk about all the um RPG elements and so on. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks. It's been fun. See ya everyone. Mm -hmm.